The question you should really be asking yourself is, is my trainer or myself, if I'm a trainer, giving the right information to my fighter in between rounds, during the fight? There are so many times we have to talk about this. I had a video request for this. Somebody said, hey, Gabriel, I wanted to know if you could do a video about how trainers should watch a fight, what they should be looking for, how to study an opponent, what to say in the corner, etc., etc. Great, great question. We're going to watch my brother's fight, his last fight, before he went on to focus on school. As we watch, I'm going to give you the information that I would be relaying. So let's just start it right now. Got um, lots of stuff to cover here. So he walks out. As soon as he walks out, you can see I'm already there with him. Just giving a little massage to the back of the neck. Keep him relaxed. As you walk your, your, your fighter back to the corner, you want to be giving them that last little bit of positive words, I suppose. Just, you can do this, it's going to go well, all that kind of stuff. We've already gone over our game plan. There's no need to give them more stuff along those lines. Just positive for the end. Maybe like, oh yeah, make sure you stay safe at the beginning. So right away, we're in the fight. As a cornerman, when you're watching a fight, you should recognize that you can give your, your fighter a little bit of information. Now it's not guaranteed they're gonna take it in because some people don't hear. And it's just a fact that the rooms are really loud, they're really nervous. As people get more experience, you can deliver more information to them and they'll actually be able to hear it and retain it. But early on, just trying to give them basics if you're gonna give them everything. Shouting out those basics. As the cornerman, let's get back to this. As the cornerman, I am watching and trying to study this guy very quickly, make the assessments. How fast is he? Right here we can see that the speed right away is getting, is getting him a little thrown off. When my brother threw that punch combo, he had a little bit of trouble. I'm looking and going, oh, in the clinch, he's not having as much trouble. And he's happy to engage there. So right away, as a cornerman, I should be going, here's where my brother should be, and here's where he shouldn't be. Front kicks are doing well, so we want a distance fight. I've made all these assessments very, very early on, and I can start relaying that to him, shouting out for, okay, let's stay on the outside, let's put fast hands together, make sure you step backwards in between. Right there, we saw a weakness. What was his weakness? We saw that when he starts to get tagged, he elongates his hands. So I now know that this guy's defense in the shell, he's not comfortable with it. Again, I can try and relay that to my brother during the fight. If you're too blatant, though, in between the fight, you're like, oh, throw an overhand, throw an overhand, throw an overhand. You have to recognize that the opponent is most likely going to pick up on that and landing the overhand is going to be much harder now. So you want to make sure you're just being a little bit more neutral with what you're saying. Maybe like, oh, Aaron, he's not great at hand defense. I want you to put fast combos together. Let's get back into the fight. You can also tell that when he does hit my brother, it's got power. He doesn't throw with a pitter patter when he hits. Look at that. He moves him. So I don't want him standing there. I don't want him standing and taking unnecessary shots because yeah, my brother's winning. He's obviously better, but it only takes one. Let's pause. I want to check the other question here. What should we be looking for in the fight? So essentially what we're looking for in the fight early on and how we're going to study this opponent is go, what are the weaknesses? What are the strengths? And we need to be on top of those really fast. I would say most specifically the strengths of this guy. So I'm already game planning when we get into round two or when I call things to my brother, I'm giving him the most dangerous things that could be coming at him and how to avoid those. Once we've established, okay, we can avoid the dangerous things and we're not worried about a big shot landing, we're not worried about getting KO'd, then we can start moving into what are his weaknesses and we try to get after those. That would basically be my priority list. If my brother's just absolutely dominant, I'd just be like, hands up. That's all you have to worry about right now, hands up. Let's keep watching this. 
This fight, spoiler alert, does go to the second round, so then we'll talk about what to say in between rounds. This is an old fight, by the way. Probably back in like 2007. So the thing is, even though Aaron's winning, he's still getting tagged now and then. So it's far from an easy fight where I'm like, oh, as a cornerman, I can just chill out and tell, tell him to have some fun or something like that. I never think you should say that to your, your fighter anyway, whoever you're cornering. Oh, just have some fun. It's going well. Like, there's always dangers. Ooh, there's the cross. So the guy's hurt. He can be hurt. Right now, I'd be yelling. I'd be yelling to my brother. Oh, the, the round ended, but don't rush in because the guy still has punching power. And I want to remind everybody that we have a glory glove giveaway underway right now. Leone, 12 ounce gloves, Velcro. These are the official ones from glory. Get registered in the link in the description below. Okay, there we go. In between rounds, what do we know? What data have we collected? We number one know that the guy doesn't like hand combos. We know he's not good at defense for front kicks to the head. We know in the clinch, he's pretty strong. I need to relay all these things as quick as possible while reminding my brother that the guy has power and you don't want to stand there and take damage. There's no unnecessary damage required. You're better than this guy. So we need to relay those things. But in my experience, we need to make sure that the main and most important factors stick with my brother when he goes back in. If I hit him with all those four things, or five or six things, he might just lose it all. It might be too much, so I prioritize. He comes back to the corner, I go, okay, Aaron, breathe. First and foremost, breathe. Because if you're talking to a fighter who's <gasps> panting and can't get their air, they're not gonna be focused. So number one, sit down, breathe. Number two, if I feel like he's ready, give him some water as I start giving instructions. Very first thing, Aaron, you're doing great. This guy has power though, respect the power. Don't take unnecessary shots. Step backwards after you combo. We've dealt with the first thing. Number two, he does not like having multiple punches thrown at him fast, so stick with speed, light him up, and exit. When you exit, get to the front kick range, and then engage there. Let's not worry about the clench. How long did that take, guys? How much information did I give him there? 20 seconds, he walks back, burns five seconds, sits down, gets his breath. We probably still have 25 seconds left. Do I give him a whole bunch of new information? No, because he might forget the first thing. I give him another sip of water and I repeat those things again. Just remember, this guy has power. I don't want you taking unnecessary shots. Remember, you can back up as well. Respect that, but keep lighting him up with those hands. Keep throwing those front kicks at distance. You can take this guy down, but don't rush it. The KO will come. We get back into round number two. Aaron's out right away, but now he takes that little step back. I don't know if that's the actual advice I gave him, by the way, in, in between. That's just what I would say now. There's that big front kick to the face. We know it works. And again, he doesn't know how to block it. It's good right here. Nice distance. Lights and lights him up, lights him up. He's on the attack. Back to the clench where we don't really need to be, but he still rocks him with the hands on the inside. At this point, it's like, yeah, you've got this fight. You've got it, but safe. Probably come out with a front kick to the face. That's probably what I'd be yelling. Front kick to the face, go high. Those leg chops are working well too, but we don't need to mix it up too much at this point. I would just be calling for fast and distance. Distance to stay safe, and then when you enter, he doesn't have the defense, which he needs. By the way, this they were fighting for a title here. I think this dude was something like 8-0. and oh. But he must have got by mostly on, on being powerful and hitting people hard. Fortunately, Aaron can take a shot. I know that because we've sparred together pretty darn hard. Good uppercut, working on the inside. I mean, at this point now, the, the, this guy is pretty much done. Some dirty boxing there on the inside. He's wobbled. Yeah, oh, that front kick to the face. I would be, I'd be saying like on the other side now, just throw the towel in guys, what are you doing? 
There we go. That's a good stoppage. So what do we have here, guys? Let's just check through this list. I'm doing this video on one straight shot, so I don't have loads of editing to do. We study the opponent in between rounds by looking at what they're best at, looking at their worst at, trying to make sure that we mitigate the dangers which they bring and we take advantage of their mistakes. In between rounds, we get them to calm down. We give them the bullet points, not too much, but not too little. Two things, maybe three in between rounds is plenty. You go overboard on that, I even somebody like myself, I'm pretty composed in a fight and I've had times where I've been given two or three points from two or three different corner men and you start going, oh, that's four to six points. I can't remember all of that when I get back out there. Best off having a couple clear things that you're trying to chase in the next round. Really, that's what you should be looking for. We could talk about, you know, before the fight, the research that we'd be doing, but that's not what we're focusing on today. It's just about being in the moment. The trainer can bring what they can't bring. There's no point in you guys when you're in there trying to get really fancy. There's no cleverness in this sport in the moment. It's take the information that's given to you, break it down, give it back to the fighter, and aside from anything else, keep your fighter in a positive spirit. Right? Don't have them come back and be like, man, you're blowing it, ah, and getting in their face. I just don't see that being something good. Come back, give them one or two things that they can work on, and maybe one or two things at most that they need to do to beat this dude, like things that are going well. So I love the question. Like, I obviously could talk about this for a long, long time. We could watch numerous fights, but really at the end of the day, that gives you the main things that you should be looking for. Hopefully, if you're a trainer, you're able to give that to your athlete. And if you're a fighter out there and you're not getting it right now, just sit down and talk to your, your coach, your cornerman, and just say, oh, could you watch this video? And that's it. They should have that all done. And that's not a negative thing either to ask somebody to watch a video. Because in all honesty, I cornered for my brother, he cornered for me. That's how we learned. But we don't have all the information down. We adjust, we improve every time, we're willing to take criticism, we're willing to make adjustments from the last time. If you just go in there and you're like, oh, I know what I'm doing and I'm not gonna listen to anybody else, well, that's short-sighted of you and you will not improve. So try and find somebody who's willing to watch videos like this and make sure that they're improving. Let's call it there, guys. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you back here soon for another episode.